Hi there, I'm Kim Santini. I'm coming to you from my studio today and I have my trusty sidekick Blue here with me today. Um, I had hoped to film this introduction outdoors, but it is a rainy, a blustery day outside, which sort of goes with the whole reason or the meaning behind this newest art so journaling lesson, which is all about migration. And we can start out by thinking of birds and other animals and how they migrate seasonally or move from one climate to the next. Um, but I also wanna encourage you to think about migration as a metaphor and uh, examine or reflect on some times in your life when you have perhaps needed a change of scenery, so to speak, in order to um, better tackle the challenges ahead of you. So grab your art supplies, settle on down, and let's do a journal page together about migration. All right, let's talk about some of the materials we're gonna to use today. You're gonna to want um, an art journal or some loose leaf paper. Uh, you don't always have to work specifically in a book. Today I am working in a dilutions journal that is made by Ranger. And this book is about eight inches by eight inches. I really enjoy these books. You can get them in a variety of sizes. Um, this rubber band is fantastic for helping to keep the book closed. Um, once you get it filled and full, your pages are full. But what I also really love is this interior envelope, which is fantastic for ephemera, um, little paper bits, ticket stubs, or anything that you might wanna store for a later journaling use can get tucked inside this little envelope here. And the book itself will also lay flat because of how it's bound. And um, I particularly appreciate that. So I'm gonna be working in, in my journal today. I have a couple pieces of plastic to help prevent um, paint and marks from getting on um, adjacent pages. I have some uh, house paint. This is a house paint sample and it's a really light value. It is almost the same color as the pages of my book. You, you want a lighter value um, base coat and you can use gesso or regular acrylic paint or craft paint if you have that. And then you're gonna want uh, a, an acrylic paint that has some color to it. I am using a uh, golden heavy body acrylic in a cobalt green, and I'm gonna talk a little bit later about why I chose this particular color. But you want, you want two paint colors, water-based, that are of different values. You want a light one for the background of your page, and then you want a meaningful color for, um, for your bird. And then uh, I have a variety of paint pens here. Uh, these are just colors that I chose that I feel go or make an interesting combination with this green. Um, so you can use whatever colors you wish. If you don't have paint pens, you could use colored Sharpies. Uh, you want an opaque sort of marker or um, tool that's gonna make an opaque mark. And if you don't have any of these things, you can even use some crayons, just good old fashioned wax crayons, okay? And I have a pencil with an eraser. I have a paintbrush. I have a paper towel here for cleaning up messes. And off camera, I have some water for cleaning my brush. You ready to get started? Let's go. So you're gonna wanna choose a spread in your book. Um, you can work on a couple of different pages or two pages together if you want, or you could concentrate and just work on one. It's completely your choice. Um, and you wanna, when you open your book, um, remember you don't have to work from, you know, the front of the book directly in, in page sequence. You can open to, you know, wherever, wherever you like. Sometimes I like to just open my book and go at it wherever the pages fall. Um, and then if you have these plastic page protectors, these are fabulous for putting in between the pages you're working on and the rest of your book. They help keep um, messy brushwork from bleeding into or potentially um, going onto the um, stack of pages underneath the one you're working on and, and accidentally gluing them together. So you just wanna snug these bits of plastic in here and these are um, just placemats from the dollar store. They're nothing fancy. We are working with acrylic paints today, so our page here is going to get somewhat wet. There won't be a whole lot of water getting added to the page, 
but when you do choose your spread, make certain that you don't have anything delicate on the opposite um, or the verso of the pages you're working on that might get damaged by um, what you're adding to the surface. All right, so and next up, I want you to think about some poetry or maybe lyrics to a particular song that have something to do with migration or change or movement or evolution. I'm gonna challenge you to think about the word migration in a way other than simply birds or wildlife moving from one climate to another with the seasons. Um, but think about how things in your life might be migratory or, or certain situations and may require a change or a shift in how you think about something and, and just the way your brain works or the way you approach a problem could also be migratory. So find some text that is meaningful to you uh, and you could just write it on your page. And it doesn't have to be neatly written or even legible. You can do spill writing where you just write the text right over itself over and over again. Um, or, or you could make it legible. It's totally your call. Um, interpret it however you wish, but you wanna use your regular pencil and you're just gonna throw your text on your page in some way. You can write it as a paragraph or a block of text. You could carry it around the perimeter of the page. Get creative and see if the words themselves or the cadence of the words uh, indicate or suggest a particular sort of um, layout. All right, so I've added my text, which happens to be from a song by Brandy Carlisle um, about resilience. And now I'm ready to add my migratory bird to the page. Now, some of you may feel intimidated about having to draw something, but I'm gonna break this down into a really simple basic shape for you um, and make it easy for everyone to draw no matter what their art experience is. Now, one of the key things to drawing and editing a drawing as you're working on it is to use really light pressure. Um, and you may notice that if you, if you alter the pressure, your pencil, or alter the pressure with your grip as well as how tight you push on the page, that impacts the quality of line. And a lot of pressure is gonna make a darker line. And when you're just doing a pencil plan to begin with, starting out with a lighter line, it makes it easier if you choose to erase or need to remove some of the marks. So um, I want you to draw your pencil plan really lightly on the page. Um, and, and that way you can figure out um, your, lay, your layout uh, as you're working on it. But I'm gonna demo on the scrap piece of paper here. So a bird is, is just a couple series of simple shapes, and I'm gonna draw these lines a little bit darker so that you can see them. You wanna start with a circle, okay? We all know how to draw a circle. So draw a circle, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna create sort of an arc for your wings. And if you're putting your bird on your page and you want, you want its head to be up here on the right-hand side, you're gonna stretch these wings to sort of match your, your page shape. They don't have to be perfectly um, symmetrical in any way, um, but just take up, take up that visual space. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a body here, all right? And a body is just sort of like an almond shape. You see how I've, I've put that almond shape in here? It touches my curve, which is inside my circle, and it stretches in the direction that the bird's spine is going to go. And then I'm gonna add a tail, and I want this to be a um, swallow tail, so I'm gonna use a split tail shape. But you, you could do a traditional bird tail if you wanted. You could make your tail whatever shape you wish. And then for, to complete the wings, I'm just gonna curve this line around and bring it back to the body. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, curve this line around and bring it back to the body. And if I wanted the wing to feel a little bit more deeper, I could do that. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna make this head just a little bit bigger. I think I didn't make it quite large enough to begin with. And then I'm gonna add a beak. So 
once I have my bird shape drawn, I'll go around it and I'll reiterate or redefine these lines. And I'm just gonna create an outline using a darker or a little bit more pressure with my pencil. And you'll notice that I didn't follow the what I had drawn, my lighter marks completely, but that's okay. This is just a pencil plan. So this is me demoing how to draw a bird for you. Now I'm actually gonna take that process over to my page and I'm gonna fill I'm gonna fill the page that way. And I'm gonna put my um I'm gonna put my bird head down here just a little bit more lower than I did in my demo. And you'll notice you maybe can't even see my lines here because I have um I'm using such light pressure. But I'm gonna tuck the wings back and, and sweep them back up to the bird. And you may also notice that I am not um, necessarily trying to avoid putting this bird over top of my uh, text. So it's all sort of overlapping or hitting the text. And that's okay. Drop this bird's shoulder down a little bit more. I'm gonna give a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a feathery edge to her wings here. I really want this to feel a bit more delicate. So you can continue to work with your bird shape until you have something that you feel good, good about. And then you wanna go over it so that your pencil lines are pretty dark. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and I'm actually gonna make the head a little bit longer and give her a little. Now you don't have to erase any lines if you don't want to, because we're gonna put paint over this, but I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit so that you can see what my shape looks like. Okay, so I have stretched this bird in flight across my page and used up the bulk of the space that I have here. Now you may wish to make your bird smaller in proportion to the page or smaller and place it in a particular location that helps present the idea of flight. It's entirely up to you how you wish to do that, okay? And then next what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a coat of this light colored paint onto my page. Let's see, I'll put it right here. So I just have a, a paintbrush here. I'm gonna dip it directly into the paint. And I'm gonna start because I'm right-handed. I wanna start from the upper left-hand side. And that just means that I'm not dragging my brush or my hand across the page at all. I'm working from wet to the wet edge or this far left edge over to the right. And um, not necessarily dragging my sleeve or my hand through or across wet paint. Now I'm not, I don't wanna cover up all of my lines. I wanna be able to see them, but I also wanna put a little bit of this product on the page because we're gonna do some blending in a minute. And because I have this plastic down, I can also carry my marks straight off the edge and not have to worry about, whoops, keeping things neat. Okay, 
Okay. And again, you know, if you cover, you find that you're covering your text up, don't worry about that. You know, one of the biggest things that I appreciate with regards to art journaling is that it's about the process, not the end result. And it doesn't matter whether or not we can actually see this text at this point. All that matters is that we know it it's there, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my green paint while this base is still pretty wet. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze just a little bit on the page. A little bit's gonna go a long way because we're working wet and wet. And I'm very gently going to brush this green out and begin to fill in the outline that I had of this bird. So I'm just going back and I'm picking up that paint as I can and pulling it down. And you'll notice that you get, or I'm getting, a uh, um, really interesting soft shape. There's also some blending that's happening as this green paint gets brushed in. Oh, and I said I was gonna talk to you a little bit too about why I chose the color green. So, you know, thinking about migration and the change of seasons, and um, in the Midwest of the United States, which is where I live, migration for us, bird migration for us, at this time of year, which is the fall, it means the end of green. Our green color sort of disappears. And um, of course we get glorious autumn color and all sorts of explosions of reds and yellows. But the green goes away until the spring. And so that was why I wanted to choose or use green on this page as sort of a nod to the fact that the green is gonna disappear in these parts pretty soon. Now you'll also notice I'm not trying to be super neat or have a completely even coat of color on my bird, because I'm gonna add some more detail to her. And actually I find this broken sort of brushwork really interesting. I find it visually pleasing, but if you want something more solid, then you can wait for your base coat to dry, and then you could work over top of it with uh, the colored acrylic paint. And you know what, if you don't have acrylic paints, you could do the same sort of concept with watercolors. I don't know that you would need to put that under undercoat in that I put into the house paint. You could just work directly on the page with your watercolors, all right? So I have my bird shape filled in for the most part, and now I am going to let her dry. If you have additional text that you wanna add, maybe a mantra or some sort of reminder, now would be a great time to find a spot on your page and add that. And I'm going to pencil something right in here. So you can follow the perimeter of your shape or go around the page. Just get creative in where you decide to, to put that text. Um, and then now comes the fun part with the markers. And I'm going to remove these plastic sheets because I find that they get in the way. Um, at this point when I want to get in closer to my page. And really what you want to do is just choose a color. And um, this, is, this is just the fun part. Where's my scrap paper? 
I haven't used my markers in a bit, so I wanna test and make sure that they're working, which they are. So, um, you know, choose a fun a color and then just choose a spot and start with, you know, some sort of spiral or um, line. So I am going to start with a line like this and then I'm gonna come back around and down and I'm just sort of making a little bit of a maze with it. And I wanna leave a little, a little bit of a valley between the lines that I've made and uh, in order for the green paint to show through. And I'm just gonna choose a couple of areas where I'm gonna do this. And you can figure out how you wish to go about building your shapes. But really what you wanna do is just sort of go around and keep your lines as close as possible to each other. I'm gonna use a skinnier one over here in the head. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a circle here for the eye, or where the eye would be, but I'm gonna just spiral out. And we'll maybe do this. And I think I'm going to outline my beak and sort of go up and down now as you first begin this you may be a little overwhelmed and not certain where you want to actually start with the lines and that's okay um, I encourage you to just dive in and keep trying um, and you'll eventually get the hang of it. And, and if you're really uncomfortable and not certain how to start, you can always play with a practice one that you did a little, um, that you did your sketch on. You can always take your, your lines over to that. So let's see, let's do some, let's do some lines back here. You can also respond to the brushwork that you have here and use the striations or the streaky marks that you feel in the brushwork or that you see in the brushwork as a starting point. Um, for instance, right here, this feels very much like a rectangle. So how about if I start in back over here and I come up to this and now I'm just, I traced around that and now I'm just going to continue with my little maze shape until it's all filled in. And I can do, let's do another one right here. There's sort of a, a shape like that right there. And then I can bring it up here. And just every every so often change your marker color um, if you have different thicknesses of marker that's a really fun thing to play with too And you don't even necessarily have to stay directly inside the green area of the bird. If you wish to move out into the white part of the page, you absolutely can do that. This is a really thick one. Let's see what we can do with you. You're not showing up so well. I'm not gonna use you. And I want you to continue in this fashion until your bird is full.
All right. So now that I have my bird filled with all her little migratory patterns, all the different pathways that she may have flown in her lifetime, I'm going to add a little bit more detail to the outer edges or the, the negative space of this painting. I've gotten a smaller brush um, than what I started out with before and using my scrap paper, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of that green paint out and I am going to pick up some of this cream colored paint and put it over here on this paper. Notice I'm just scooping a tiny bit of it out. I'm not really getting my brush that, dipping my brush that deeply into the paint. I have a nice puddle of that here and I'm gonna pick up some of the green and I'm gonna mix it into this. And I don't wanna mix it really um, perfectly because I like that, I like the striations, the sort of little bits of marks that it makes, but I'm just gonna go back and forth and also just sort of think about with this brush, you know, mirror the sorts of line maze marks that I just made inside of the, uh, of the bird. And I'm gonna do it with this brush and the shapes. Ah, I can't do it and think at the same time. I'm gonna do it with this brush and the in, inside the negative space, just in a, in a larger, looser fashion. You'll notice I'm dipping my brush straight in to the paint and being very careful not to let that paint travel way far up in my brush herself. That gives me control over the marks that I'm making. And I, of course I can go back in with the light paint and reiterate that path, pathway or pattern. Let's do something right here. The way, reason I like to mix with my brush versus with another tool is because it allows me to get some nuance in the in the marks that I'm making. While these marks may feel very much like they are the same color as what's in the background here, it, they aren't because there's a little bit of this green in them. Um, so they're just a little bit different. And I, I probably should have put those um, plastic page protectors back in. Um, but because I didn't, I'm going to be careful to not go all the way up to the edge of the page. And because I've really been into dots lately, I'm just going to do some little hash marks right here. And I'm going to put some up here too. I feel like these little tally marks represent something or other, a trip, a journey, a cycle.
All right, so I have taken my pencil and gone back in and added a few more pencil lines. Again, paying attention to the rhythm or the nature of the paint lines that I put in there. Um, I also decided that I wanted to add some halos um, around the bird's head. And then also because they're going with the idea of flight or um, movement migration, I decided to add some postage stamps from my um, collage collection and I just glued those down on the page. And I always try to remember to, sometimes I forget, but I love to date the pages as a reminder to myself as to when I made it. So there you go. I hope that you have enjoyed making your own migration page and I encourage you to take uh, artistic license with any of the details or prompts that I've shared with you today and really make this exercise your own. And again, challenge you to not just think about literal migration of birds, but all of the seasonal journeys that you have taken in your own life and um, how, how those meanderings or adventures have impacted the person that you are today. Thanks so much for so journaling with me. I will be back next month with another lesson.